My name is Robert Mitchell, and I am a deacon in Ecclesia Epignostica Church. The host consumed here today has been consecrated by my bishop for this purpose. This is the body of Christ, and must be shown the sacred reverence due the Son of God. If you are a sacramental Christian, please observe the guidance of your bishop as to whether or not, and in what manner, you may participate in Holy Communion today. Other baptized Christians should observe the guidance of their pastor. Persons not baptized in the Christian faith should not partake of Holy Communion. Let us begin. Brothers and sisters, welcome to Holy Communion service for the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time here at St. Barachiel Chapel in Richmond, Virginia. Please see the link in the comments to be directed to the program for today's service. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, let us now confess our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, to Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, to Blessed Michael, the Archangel, to Blessed John the Baptist, to the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, to all the saints, and to you, brethren, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I beseech Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, Blessed Michael the Archangel, Blessed John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, all the saints, and you, brethren, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, be merciful unto us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thou, O Lord, being turned toward us, wilt enliven us. 
Show us, O Lord, thy mercy. O Lord, hear my prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us recite together now the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And now, the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Ghost, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, together with the Holy Ghost, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The Word of the Lord. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. The just rejoice and exult before God. They are glad and rejoice. Sing to God, chant praise in his name, whose name is the Lord. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. The father of orphans and the defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God gives a home to the forsaken. He leads forth prisoners to prosperity. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. A bountiful rain you shower down, O oh God, upon your inheritance. You restored the land when it languished. 
your flock settled in it, in your goodness. O oh God, you provided for the needy. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire, and gloomy darkness, and storm, and a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them. No. You have approached Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and countless angels in festal gathering, and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and God the judge of all and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The Word of the Lord. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O Almighty God, who didst cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal from thine altar. And vouchsafe through thy gracious mercy, so to purify me that I may worthily attend to thy holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and in a becoming manner attend to his holy gospel. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Take my yoke upon you, says the Lord, and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him. And the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, Give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, Go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, My friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, 
Do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. Pardon me, brothers and sisters. It's, uh, it's about 90 degrees here in the chapel this morning, and I'm not quite over COVID. Also, I don't have any prepared words. I'll be speaking from the heart today. Brothers and sisters, it's very hard to be humble when the whole world is telling you to be filled with pride and sense of self all day long. Every message you see on the television, on the radio, says, sing your own praises. If you don't toot your own horn, there'll be no music. Do your own thing. Be your own person. Be your authentic self. No one seems to think about this fact that our authentic selves are often very childish. They want delicious food, fancy toys, an easy way out. The book of Sirach says that water quenches a flaming fire. I wonder, though, why would you want to quench the flame of your pride? I mean, it's fun, isn't it? It's perfectly natural, isn't it? The things you have, you earned them. You worked hard for them, didn't you? Or did you? Is it possible that you have them because others cared deeply about you and taught you the things you needed to know in order to earn that money? Is it possible you owe a debt of gratitude to others who may have even passed on? To your deceased grandparents or parents, perhaps? Or to a beloved mentor who has now passed over the hill? Is it possible that you learned something from a book? From an author long dead? Is it possible that you owe your success to teachers, collegiate teachers, or coaches? Is your success your success? Really? It's useful to perhaps ask yourself that question. And when you are not doing well, but also suffices to ask yourself whose fault that might be. In fact, even when others around you are failing, it might serve you well to ask yourself how much of their failure is your failure for being a poor leader or for setting a poor example. Things at first blush are not always 
what they see. Is it true, brothers and sisters, that many people fail by their own mistakes? Certainly. But isn't it also true that we often fail others? And that we contribute to their failure? I often get asked advice, <clears throat> friends, children, and those who need counseling. They'll say they're depressed or they're unhappy. And my advice to these people is often, often takes the following form. I will tell them to do something nice for someone else. And they'll say, like what? And I'll say, stop worrying about yourself and start worrying about someone else. Cook a meal for an elderly person in your neighborhood and take it to them. Or bake a cake and take it to your neighbor. Go to the shelter and adopt a pet. Don't write a check. Don't send an email. Physically do something. Go and volunteer some time. Physically clean out your home and donate something. Clean out the cabinets. Not of the things you desire, you need or desire least, but clean out the food cabinets of some of your most precious, delicious treats and donate them to the food bank. Because brothers and sisters, when you give up those things that you cherish and you aid someone else, then you have given yourself value. This will improve your self-esteem. And this will help lift you out of your depression. This is what the book of Sirach is trying to tell us when it says, Water quenches a flaming fire and alms atone for sins. Often your depression is because you don't feel good about yourself or you feel guilty. Doing something kind for someone else will help you with that a great deal. Start small. We should take heart because we are not seeing as Moses did a terrifying message upon a mountain, but rather the uplifting message of a new covenant. We should take heart in that. And if we do that, and if we start small, then perhaps we'll be able to appropriately take the lowest seat at the table for which we can have the hope of being repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. But even that expectation is perhaps too much. Hopefully, if we are able, we can take a back seat, expecting nothing whatever in return. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, three persons in one God, 
be ascribed as his most justly due. All honor, might, majesty, power, and dominion, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. Let us recite together now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and in life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. At the Savior's command and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament of the altar has left us a living memorial of thy passion, grant us so to venerate the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood, that we may ever feel within ourselves the fruit of thy redemption, who livest and reignest with the Father in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God forever and ever. Amen. May this mixture and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be to us that receive it effectual to eternal life. Amen. Ye that desire to partake of the body of the Lord, draw nigh and receive this most holy sacrament. Those participating at home may now partake of Holy Communion.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep thee unto life eternal. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank Thee for having fed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> having assured us of Thy favor and goodness toward us, that we might be members of Thy mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. We most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, to assist us with that grace that we may continue in holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for baby Owen, his mother Sarah, Father Michael, and brother Everett. We pray for our brothers and sisters, Tim and Melissa Jones, Rusty and Peggy, Eddie, Diane, Jennifer, Juan and Maria, all suffering with health issues, surgeries, cancers, and more. We pray for our departed brothers and sisters, for Captain Bill Backert, especially Father. We pray for our bishops, presiding Bishop Katia, 
Bishops Angela, Linda, Ben, and especially for my mentor, Bishop Eric. We pray for our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine. Heavenly Father, soften the hearts of the aggressors, strengthen the hearts of the oppressed, and if it be your will, deliver peace to the region. Heavenly Father, we offer our blessings and our thanks to Leo, James, and Hunter, whose monthly donations make the mission of St. Barakiel possible. Bless the mission of St. Barakiel Chapel, Heavenly Father, and Heritage Arts, that we might spread our message of mind, body, and spirit health to the millions struggling with ill health lack of direction and meaning. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, together with the Holy Ghost, three persons in one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. May the Queen of Heaven intercede with us, for us with the Lord our God. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, we humbly beseech thee to behold, visit, and relieve thy sick servants for whom our prayers are desired. Amen. Look upon them with the eyes of mercy. Comfort them with the sense of thy goodness. Preserve them from the temptations of the enemy and give them peace under their affliction. Amen. In thy good time, restore them to health and enable them to lead the residue of their life in thy fear and to thy glory. And grant that finally they may dwell with thee in life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, look on your servants drawing near death of the flesh, lying in great weakness, and comfort them with the promise of life everlasting, given in the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants for whom our prayers are offered, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and in confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, bread of life, by the power of this Holy Communion and its promise of life everlasting, deliver those for whom we pray from the death that lasts forever. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in peace. Into your hands, O Lord Christ, we commend our brothers and sisters. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Thrust into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. O powerful angel Saint Barachiel, filled with heaven's glory and splendor, you are rightly called to God's benediction. We are God's children placed under your protection and care. Listen to our supplications and grant that through your loving intercession we might reach our heavenly home one day. Sustain and protect us from all harm, that we may possess for all eternity the peace and happiness Jesus has prepared for us in heaven. Present to God the Father all our petitions. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. 
We who have been refreshed with thy heavenly gifts do pray thee, O Lord, that thy grace may be so grafted inwardly in our hearts that it may continually be made manifest in our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us now go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're in need of help, pastoral counseling, or you'd just like to avail yourselves of our free services, please reach out to me at mitch at heritageartsinc.com. I hope to see you again next Sunday. Take care and God bless.